Here are some ways that drone photographers can benefit from Luminar 3. We're going to go through some of the newest features in Luminar 3 so that you can find a nice easy workflow to take your drone images from beginning to end. One of the new features is the ability to rate your images. So as you can see here, I've imported a folder of images. There's my aerial folder, miscellaneous and wildlife, but we're going to be focusing on aerial today. And here are some images that I brought in from an external hard drive. So in this case, what I want to do first is I'll go through and maybe pick a few of my favorites that I might want to do some future editing with. If you go ahead and right click on your image, you'll see that you'll have the ability to set flags with the keyboard shortcuts, set ratings, as well as set color labels. So let's go ahead and go through first and pick the ones that we want to do some future editing with. Um, I love this top down view, so I'm going to go ahead and pick P for pick. And as you can see, there's a little heart there showing that this is one of my favorites. We'll definitely go ahead and edit this one here. This is from the Salt and Sea. And maybe we'll want to take a look at this image here off the coast of San Diego. Now, another thing that I might want to do is to go ahead and I will right click again so I can show you these keyboard shortcuts, but you have different ratings. So you can go through your images and maybe rate from one to five. These are images that you might want to go back to to do future editing. Go ahead and pick the number that matches the star rating. So we're going to go through and select a few of these. So I love this one. It's one of my all time favorites. I'm going to give it a five star rating. And as you can see on the left hand corner, we have five stars here. Again, I love this image here. This one's a little dark. This is off the pier from San Diego. It's okay. I think I can fix it, especially with some of those beautiful filters that we've got within Luminar. But I'm going to give this one a three. That's something I'll go back to later. This is another favorite of mine, but I'm going to give this one a four. And let's see here. We'll give this one a five. I'm just going to go through and kind of star rate these with different stars. One, this might be a two. And this one over here might, well, might give it a three, for instance. Okay, uh, once I do that, then I can go ahead and right click on here again. I'll show you another thing that we can do to tag our images, and that's with color labels. So as you can see, again, we have some numeric keyboard shortcuts that you can use, or you can go up into this menu here and select the ones that you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna choose red for a few of these images. What I want to do is I just want to pick out my Sedona images here. So I'm going to click on my keyboard, the number six. And as you can see on the upper right hand corner, it's red. So I'll just pick a couple of those. And that kind of indicates these two might go together, for instance. One of the abilities we can do is sync images together with adjustments. So that might be something that I might want to do is sync these two together so they kind of match a little bit. Or maybe these pot air balloons down below. Now, what I want to do as well is over here on the right hand side, I want to show you we've got albums and folders. As you can see, our folders were brought in from my external drive. It could have been from my uh, memory card. It could have been from my hard drive on my desktop. So there's multiple ways that we can find these folders and edit them. We can also have albums. Albums are virtual, which means that they aren't actually saved in here. This is more of a way to categorize your images. So one of the things I really love doing with my drone photography is to be able to maybe get an album of ocean images or desert or top down. So that's just another way of labeling them. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to go ahead and click on this first image. This is a top down view of the ocean. I'll hold down my command key to also select this image here. So this lets you just kind of click through and select the images that you want that might be related to ocean, for instance. Now I'm going to go over to albums. And as you can see, there's a plus sign here. I'll go ahead and click on that and I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it ocean view. So now I know that those are going to be my ocean images. So if I click back on Arial, you'll see all my images are here. I'll just click off on the salt and sea image. I'll go back to ocean view. Isn't that nice? So now I can go ahead and kind of sort those out and make it really easy to find some of my images here. What you might want to do as well is to be able to sort and find some of these images. So remember how we went ahead and selected our favorites by clicking the letter P on our keyboard, or we could click on that little heart. If I wanted just to show just the favorites, uh, I can go ahead and click on favorites and see these are the ones that I had favorited. Probably the ones that I'm going to go ahead and edit first. 
And let's go ahead and choose something that's maybe three stars and above. So these are all of my, these are good images to excellent images. And I can also choose the color. So if I wanted just to see the ones that I labeled for red for my Sedona images, I can do that as well. Okay, we're gonna go back now and choose all of our photos. So we'll take a look at all of our aerial images again. I'll go ahead and click on all photos. And what we're gonna do now is take one of these images and use some of our artificial intelligent filters. So to get into the edit mode, I'm gonna simply go over here in the upper right hand corner and choose edit. For those of you who have used Luminar before, this should look really familiar to you. You can add any one of these 51 filters. You can go under Luminar looks and we have seven built in looks that are available to you. You can even download others as well from our website. For this one, we're gonna look at Arial and these are gonna be our aerial looks that are available to us. And we can just kind of go through and scroll through and click on these. Now these were inspired by DJI and we will see that some of these particular filter looks will bring out the contrast, maybe some of the color, making it more dramatic. And just keep in mind that any of these particular effects, you can take this amount slider and bring it down to the left so that you can slightly enhance it or move it all the way to the right to maximize it. Now, I love this particular filter here. It's called Aerial Dreamy, kind of makes things a little bit softer. And so I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at 62, a very easy way to just adjust this particular image. Now, we do wanna show you that there's a custom workspace. These are some of the specific things that are available for aerial photographers. Under custom workspace, you're going to see a list of different filters that we've set up for these particular workspaces. This particular one is called Aerial Photography. When I click on that, you'll notice that any of the effects that were applied to my Aerial Dramatic or Aerial Dreamy look has disappeared. That's because these filters here are set to zero. So you're starting out from scratch. And that's the difference between the filters within the workspace. And then if you had selected, let's say this aerial dreamy effect, you'll see that as I expand some of these different filters that they have been either increased or reduced to apply that particular effect. So let's go back to the custom workspace specifically for aerial photography. And now you'll see that there's a whole list of really lovely filters. And these are my favorites to use for aerial photography. We can go into this particular filter here. It's called Accent AI Filter. This is our artificial intelligence filter, one of them. And what this will do is as I bring up this boost slider to the right, you'll notice that the clarity, the saturation, the sharpness, the contrast becomes enhanced. So this is actually a really intelligent filter that looks at the different areas of your image and enhances it. Most of the time, this is all I need to do to fix my image. Now I can go up to the top and click on the visibility icon to turn it on and off to see before and after. And I can also see the split screen before and after. Now, another of my favorites is this AI Sky Enhancer. And for aerial photographers, a lot of our particular images are like landscape photography. We have the same issues. Maybe we have a sky that needs to be enhanced or polarized, or maybe we need to remove some of the haze in the background or bring up the saturation and vibrance. So there's many different filters that you can choose from here, but we're gonna take a look at the AI Sky Enhancer. I'll go ahead and click and drag this to the right, and you'll notice the sky itself becomes a little bit more saturated, uh, brings out a little bit more detail in the clouds without affecting anything else. It's really what I call a magical filter. Um, so we can actually see this particular filter on and off and you'll see it just affects that sky. So if you wanted to go back to another image to go ahead and edit it, you can either choose it from your film strip on the left hand side of the screen here, or I like to go ahead and click on this up arrow and this will display my images. I can also make them large, largest there, or I can go ahead and reduce it. And pressing the F key on your keyboard will actually hide the left and right panels so that you have full access to the images that are available to you. So as you can see, this is a really powerful program that lets you browse, rate, go ahead and edit with some filters that are unique to aerial photographers 
and you can get some just absolutely excellent results. So I hope you'll try it on your own aerial images 